what is up you guys so in this one we'll be giving an application on convex optimization and in particular linear programming to a very well-known problem that is the assignment problem so we'll introduce the assignment problem using a small example and then we will cast the assignment problem as a linear program as you can see and finally we will get the job done on MATLAB to get the optimal assignment to this assignment problem so without further ado let's get started so I'm going to start off with a small example and hopefully you'll understand the assignment problem through this nice example so let's say I've got three project leaders right we've got Boney we've got Clyde and Frank so those are three project leaders and each of the project leaders have been offered prices from three clients on from three different clients to complete some tasks that is the company faces the task of assigning a project leader to each client now currently three individuals have no other commitments and are available for the project leader assignment. Now, the company realizes, however, that the time required to complete each study will depend on the experience and ability of the project leader assigned. Now, the three projects have approximately the same priority. So, in terms of priority, all are important. And the management wants to assign project leaders to minimize the total number of days so the objective here is to minimize the total number of days to complete all three projects simultaneously if a project leader is to be assigned to one and only one client then the question is which assignments should be made so in other words if Boney asked client one and client one told Boney that oh I need 10 days to finish the project and likewise client two told Boney I need 15 days to finish the project and client three said nine then I've got the following network connection right likewise Clyde asked client one and he told him nine client two said 18 and client three said five. Likewise, Frank, we've got the following values, six, 14, and three, right? So we can tabulate the values that we have, right? And so this is the, the table that we have. So Boney, so client three told Boney that I need nine days. Client two told Frank I need 14 days and so on. This is how you read the table. And so if you want to formulate an optimization problem to find the best assignment strategy to, you know, find the minimum number of days needed to assign projects to clients, then we can propose the following. So we can define a binary decision variable, xij, which is one, if project leader i is assigned to client j and zero elsewhere, right? where in our particular case i and j are in take values one two and three i equal one stands for bony i equal two stands for clyde and i equal three stands for frank right likewise the clients are indexed by j right okay so now we can write down the cost function that needs to be minimized right now if we're at bony the total number of days would be 10x11 plus 15x12 plus 9x13 now of course only one of those variables are going to be one and the others are zero because we said only one client per project leader right this will be modeled in the constraints of the problem likewise if we stand at Clyde if we're at Clyde Clyde has following options so 9 x21 
plus 18x22 plus 5x23, right? And last but not least for Frank, we've got 6x31 plus 14x32 plus 3x33, right? So ideally, you'd want a constraint that you'd want a 1, xij should be 1, should be 1 per row per column. So 1 should exist only once in each row and column, right? However, this problem would turn out to be a mixed integer program and hence will, will be hard to solve. So instead, what we're going to do is say that if I take a look at the sum of xij's per row is equal to 1. So that said, I could say that xij per column, the sum of xij's in each column are 1. That means x11 plus x21 plus x31 is 1. And likewise for the second and third columns. Now you're going to do the, the same thing for each row, right? So, so at the first row we get x11 plus x12 plus x13 is 1. And likewise for the second and third rows we've got the same constraint. Now this is the optimization problem corresponding to the assignment problem. So let's solve this problem on MATLAB and let's start by defining the coefficient vector of the cost function. So we have 10, 15, 9. So 10, 15, 9, then 9, 18, 5, so 9, 18, 5, and 6, 14, and 3. Okay, now let's define the equality constraints. So as we saw in previous lectures, those equality constraints could be packed up into 1 AX equal B constraint right so the b contains the entries on the right hand side and a contains the coefficients of the decision variables that is all ones at suitable positions so for that i'm going to write a function that gives me the index in the matrix this function is called couple to index and it will take the subscripts by indices of each decision variable. So for x11, I'll pass it 11. For x21, I'll pass it 21, and so on. And n is the size of the problem. So simply my index will turn out to be n times i minus 1 plus j. And likewise, I'll need a function to do the inverse operation. That is, it will return me the couple given the index. You can go ahead and verify that the first entry should be the ceiling of index over n and the second one should be... Actually we did something really similar in previous lectures when we were talking about shortest route and so on, right? So if you want to test those functions, let's say couple to index two, three, and I'll pass it three, size of the problem. So for two, three, you get six. And let's do the inverse operation on six. It gives me two, three. Okay, so let's define the A matrix, so A equality. 
which has six equations in nine unknowns, right? So six by nine and B equality contains is a six size vector with all ones, right? So ones, six by one. Now A equality, the first equality constraint contains three decision variables indexed by one, one, two, one, and three, one. So one, one, so one, one, two, one, and three, one, where N is the size of the problem, set it to three, right? Now I'll copy paste this. Now for the second equality constraint, I've got one, two, 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 and three, two, right? So for the second, I've got one, two, 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 and three, two, right? Actually, let's do this in a loop, no? So for k equal one to n, the kth, so from one to three, I've got this. Notice that the second index is the equality constraint number. So this is how you can model it. And for the rest, you're going to have to do the inverse, right? So I'll just shift this guy by three. So plus three. And over here, we'll have to invert the order. So running this to see how the matrix A looks like. So run, and there you go. And B looks like this. Okay, good. Now we are ready to solve the problem. So X optimal is the solution of a linear program with cost function C. A inequality and B inequality are undefined. A equality and B equality are as such. Let's lower bound the problem by maybe zero. Right. I don't have an upper bound. Well, you can say that my upper bound is one. But let's leave it as such. I don't have an initial point. And let me pass some options for the solver where the options are configured using optimum options. I'll specify I have a linear program algorithm that uses the dual simplex. And I want to display information at every iteration, right? So let's run this. Actually, the solution looks like this, which is hard to read because it's laid down as a row as such, no? So a row. Now to convert it, we're going to make use of index to couple because we've got indices and we want to convert it to couples, right? So to get the indices, I'll find all the entries in X up that are one. And then I'll get the couples as, or let's call them assignments, right, as index to couple, pass it the index and the size of the problem. So let's run. And there you go. So the first column is actually the project leaders and the second column corresponds to the clients. So that means Boney is one, Clyde is two, Frank is three, and these are the clients. So the optimal assignment would be to assign client two to Boney, client three to Clyde, and client one to Frank. In that scenario, you need 26 days in total, right? Let's verify this is correct. So Boney to client two, that's 15. Clyde to client three, that's five. And Frank to client one, that's six. 
So 15 plus 5 plus 6, that's 26 days, right? So there you go. That's how you deal with assignment problems if you want to formulate them as linear programs, right? So that's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. So in this one, we introduced the assignment problem through a very small example, and we saw how to reformulate this problem as a linear program where the constraints of the problem correspond to the decision variables. We also saw how to solve the problem on MATLAB, how to set the problem up, and use MATLAB's linprog function to get the job done. Thanks for watching. If you found this lecture beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions whatsoever, kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Thank you so much and I'll see you in future lectures.